Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokish. I'm here with Tim Hagen at the Omaha, Nebraska Unconvention, and he is currently the treasurer on the Libertarian National Committee. Very important job, one that I suppose the better you are at it, the less we hear from you, right? <laughs> exactly. The best thing is not hearing anything about the treasurer. The treasurer not getting in trouble with the FEC, having any lawsuits filed <laughs> by the FEC is a good thing. <laughs> so. You've been doing this for three terms. I, I, right. I think that just goes to show uh, how badly people really want uh, to avoid this position <laughs> as much as possible. Did you, did you get voluntold? How did you come to run for treasurer in the first place? Um, I got asked to run as six years ago, first time ran. Um, at the, actually, the night before the convention, had some, a couple people asked me to run. I did some questioning other people, see if there's interest in me running. So molded over some and decided to run. And uh, one of the promises I did make, because like you said, some people don't like the job. The previous few treasurers had quit before the end of the term. So I was asked if I would serve the full term, and I've served three. Yeah, and, and only a few of them committed suicide. It's really not that bad of a job. But yeah, no, that, I really, it really does say something yeah. about you know the, the commitment to the party that you're willing to take on okay. like the, really the least glorious and and most burdensome job in the i mean is that is that is that too much of an exaggeration it's at least up there right probably up there some are more burdensome but okay <laughs> some people get really active in some of the committees and do a lot of work <laughs> so in the last six years there has been no one else who has been as on top of the budget of the libertarian party as yourself now have you had any concerns during that time about seeing where money is going or are there any lessons you think that are important for the Libertarian Party to know, for members to know about where the money is going that, that you might have some unique insight on from your experience? Um, one thing I've noticed that a lot of us who are from states that have pre easy ballot access um, is how much money the National Party has to spend on ballot access for states where it's so it's this horrible access laws and the states can't do it themselves and we want to have um, we always have goals of 50 ballot, 50 state ballot access so we do end up spending a few hundred thousand dollars um, especially on presidential year um, and then on the off year is, is ballot year access is, is, is ballot access the the biggest single budget item in the in the national budget it's not the single bit Biggest, um, just overall administrative costs is quite a bit because um, you have the overhead of the headquarters building in D.C. and the administrative part of the staff. And we also try to divide out the, like the sport functions on, on the budget under what, whether they're doing candidate support, they show under that instead of administration. Or if they're doing affiliate support, it goes under affiliate support. So for ballot access, do so you think that's like the most surprising item that, that members might be, be surprised to hear that it's several hundred thousand dollars out of how much is the, is the annual budget or has it been roughly over the last six years? Um, roughly one and a half million. It, it varies it on the convention years. It's higher, it goes up because we have the convention, but um, packages, sales, plus the convention expenses. I think last years. year was a good year. I heard 2.2 .2 million. Is that right? Am I yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's, yeah, we had. It was an excellent year last year. Um, Clinton and Trump helped out the party by <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> being so horrible that <laughs> the party grew quite a bit and our do donations, especially 2016, really skyrocketed. And with that money, uh, one thing that I helped push with um, was to pay down on the mortgage on the office space with the excess we got in 2016. So I helped out the party because we have a balloon payment that will be due in 2025 to avoid. Well, I just want to point out this thing about ballot access to, to people who don't know that the challenges the, the Libertarian Party faces, not just what we know of, you know, mainstream media not giving us a fair shake, uh, you know, the, the, all, all the challenges that we were familiar with, but specifically ballot access, just being allowed to get on the ballot as a, as a third party, as a smaller party. If you don't qualify in, in some states, like you said, it's different from state to state for you know major party ballot access, then you have to jump through a lot of hoops. You have to collect a ridiculous amount of signatures. And it, it's at the point where the, most of this money for ballot access is going to, to pay people to collect signatures, correct? Right. Um, yeah, some require, like say, 40,000 signatures on the ballot next state. And 
I think the average we've probably paid, if my memory is probably by $2 a signature. Depends what other petitions are going on at the same time, maybe 250 or $3 per signature. I, I will point out there has been one uh, sort of minor scandal around uh, the spending on, on uh, ballot access, and that is that uh, a lot of that money has gone to pay non-libertarians. Now, in some states, like in Tennessee, they recently instituted a program that was open to anybody, and anybody could come in and make money collecting signatures for the state party for ballot access. But I, I think, th th if I may, there seems like the big implication from this is that if, if you're a member of the Libertarian Party, if you live in one of those states, uh, stop accepting welfare from the national organization, get out there, collect your own signatures. <laughs> uh, and, and, and I say that I, 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 in a humorously condescending way because I don't mean it that way. But uh, really, it, it, I, I've done signature gathering before. It is, and it, it is uh, one, once you find out a way to make it fun, getting out and talking to strangers, asking people to support the party, it, it, it is a fun and effective way to do outreach, to just talk to random Americans about libertarianism and like to get out there. And, and like, the libertarians seem to have a bit of an issue with that at times, but yeah. so I, I, I'm, I'm grateful for that, uh, hey, that insight. It's tough at very first to try to get people signed in. I fear most people would <laughs> until they really figure out what works and get in the hang yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, so, tough job. Tim, you're running for re-election this year. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, you know, my condolences if you win, because it looks like, uh, you know, you, at this point, obviously, you know, the CLP, anything could happen. It's not like this is some crazy, hotly contested race. It's not like Tim's going to pull his hair out if, if he doesn't win re-election, obviously. <laughs> He's got a very healthy detachment from this. But just looking forward, you know, assuming uh, the, the, that you win re-election, you're on the LNC, uh, you know, what, what do you think the, the LP has to look forward to? Um, I think right now we're still growing. I say our donations have increased. Um, a lot of it's from the development department we now have, the development director that's been hired. And that's allowing us to do more things. And one of the things I heard about is supposed to come out next weekend. So we're getting a preview on this. <laughs> um, they're going to be offering websites and CRM for local candidates. I hate to say it because that's, that's such a beautiful thing. But it's about damn time uh, and it, it's cool to see that finally the, the LP national organization is maturing to the point where we can fund a lot of the infrastructure Tim do you have do you have a personal website or anything else you want to promote well, actually I'm LP.org LP.org go to LP.org become a member hey. mem <laughs> become now, a member button <laughs> now Tim's gonna hate me for this there's a there's a secret free membership option but you should join and pay your $25 because it helps to maintain the critical infrastructure of the national party to support states support individual candidates and all the effective mechanisms for getting the message out there um, yeah to become just a regular member you all have, all have to sign the pledge become a sustaining member is $25 um, per year to become a life member is a low price of $1,500. <laughs> that's, that's, that's only true now. You see, see this little shiny badge that we, we both have here? As, as, as financial supporters of the LP, we're very proud of this. You know, I got a secret here. I got mine for only $1,000 back in the day. That's how oh, bad the inflation. I've been, I've, been in an, I've been in the LP long enough for 50% price inflation <laughs> to have occurred 2004 when I first got back from Iraq. Tim, thank you so much, and All thanks right. for your service to the party and the cause. Thank you. I also have one other website to promote. I'm also running for U.S. Senate, so if you want to go to timhagan.us, that's T-I-M-H-A-G-A-N.us, that's my website for my campaign or Senate. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. Thanks. Great. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions including DTube, and you can find that through steamit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.